Here's something that I think is kind of curious about writers. First of all, if you write, if you're a writer, you love to write. By which I mean, you love it when you're actually writing, when it's going well, when you've lost track of time, when your characters are doing surprising things, when you're in the flow, in the zone, you love it. You love it. It's as good as life gets. It is. I've always felt that way. When I'm really in that flow, that's as good as it gets. I love it. I want nothing more from life than that experience. And yet, many of the writers I know, many of the writers I work with as students and clients, or I just talk to casually at writers' conferences, deal with procrastination. Procrastinate themselves. Avoid writing. Avoid it. Even though they love it. This thing that makes them happy, that makes them feel creative, that gives life meaning. Some days they would rather clean their gutters than write. Isn't that strange? Why avoid doing something you love? Well, there's a lot of reasons for it, but I want to address one in particular today. Imagine you had a, a job, a job you liked doing. It was a fun job. You really were glad you had that job, except the only problem with this job is a coworker, one in particular. And every time you went to this job and you started doing your work, which in this case is writing, telling stories, he, and in my case, he would be a he, stood behind you and said, hmm, boy, I don't know about that sentence. That seems a little predictable. Or do you really think this story is going to sell? Because the last one you wrote didn't sell. Or he said, gee, wh why did you write that? Oh, my God. Don't What kind of a... What kind of, a real writer wouldn't have written that? Or if you were waiting for another uh, idea to come, he would say, oh, a real writer would have had an idea already. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? If that person was waiting at your desk every day and never shut up and kept questioning every question, every sentence you wrote and wondering what other people would think of it, you might uh, avoid coming into work. It would make sense. Why would you want to have that experience? You wouldn't. You don't want to have that experience. And you know a bad experience when you're having one. And if you're like anybody I know, including myself, you avoid it. So in that way, procrastination makes sense. You are avoiding having this experience you don't want to have. But of course, you don't need to listen to that coworker. That coworker is, in my opinion, the inner critic. Now, the inner critic uh, has a kind of a mixed reputation in the writing community to some degree we attribute we um i think we value him or her a little bit because we link the inner critic to the constructive and useful feedback we can get we can get from a really good editor or uh, a writing partner or a really good critique group i think critique groups can be a little dodgy but feedback can be very useful and so we link the usefulness of feedback to what the inner critic says to us. However, in my experience, when I have listened to the inner critic, what I consider to be the inner critic, I am always left, I never was left wanting to quit writing, but I was left feeling like it was a waste of time, that it wasn't going anywhere, that I didn't have what it took. That's how my inner critic left me feeling. And if that's what the inner critic is leaving me feeling, he is not very helpful. The inner critic is not actually helpful. The inner critic is the voice of fear. The inner critic is trying to prevent you from doing something shameful, revealing something ugly about yourself. He has no suggestions. He has no creative ideas. All he's doing is saying, be careful. Don't make a mistake. Oh my God, you made a mistake. Oh, you did it again. Whoa, what's wrong with you? Now you could ask him, as I have tried, to say, will you please shut up? I'm trying to do something here. But the inner critic, if you've been listening to him, will only say, hey, man, I'm trying to help. I'm here to help. I'm trying to keep you from making a fool of yourself. Thank God I'm here. Not for me. You'd just be writing any old thing down and people would see it. And then what would happen? The inner critic thinks he's helping, but he's not. But he's not. Now, there's a number of ways to deal with the inner critic, but here's the really the only one that ultimately works. I'll come back to this because I think the inner critic is a big He's a big bugbear in the world of writing. But here's the only real way that works for the inner critic. The only way to silence the inner critic is to quit listening to him. The more you listen to him, the more he talks. The less you listen to him, the less he talks. That's it. And 
I know it sounds simple and it is in its in its application. In other words, it's not complicated, but it can be challenging because you're used to listening to him and he's very insidious and he thinks he's helping you and you think he's helping you, but he's not. So all you can do is practice not listening to him. Recognize when he begins to talk and you'll know he's talking because of how you feel. You won't feel good. You won't feel creative. You won't feel inspired. No, no, no. You might want to give up. You'll feel talentless. That's the prod. That's the end result of listening to the inner critic. But if you can begin practicing ignoring his advice, because again, the more you listen, the more he talks, the less you listen, the less he talks. If you can begin practicing ignoring his advice, practice not listening to him when he starts talking, there will come a day, as it has for me, there will come a day for you where you will look up and you won't remember the last time you heard from him. And that'll be a good day for sure. Thanks for watching, as always. So if you don't want to miss one of a little dose of inspiration, be sure to click subscribe. And if you want to help other people uh, like yourself, find these little messages, these bits of inspiration. The best thing to do is like this or leave a comment or share it. So until next time, this is Bill Knauer. Stay fearless.